All right, welcome to our uh, second session of uh, Bracketology here on the Skidmore College campus. Uh, I'm happy to have with me women's basketball coach Darren Ben has been kind enough to break down the NCAA women's bracket, something you're not going to see anyplace else. Obviously, the mothership, ESPNW, Kate Fagan, our friend Kate Fagan from uh, the Post Star, uh, now uh, with the mothership, will be breaking down the bracket. But we went to our expert here in our backyard, Darren Bennett, to break down the women's bracket. Uh, Coach Burke was on earlier, so uh, we're going to see how Coach Bennett does here on the women's bracket. And uh, one thing we talked about earlier was you probably had the harder job, do you think, with breaking down the women's bracket versus the men's bracket? Well, in, in, a, diff in, in a different way, I think so, yes. Um, just from the details of every single team and how they may win or, or may not win. The men's game being more televised, more talked about, there's shows almost every night until the first game happens. Um, whereas on the women's side, it's more really about the tradition of the programs, the longevity of the coaches. There are fewer opportunities to watch the women's game on TV, but you still stay connected to it. And, you know, the bracket's the bracket, and the teams are going to win are going to win. All right. So I'm gonna add, right off the hop, I'm going to ask you, what does it take to win to get into this tournament at the D1 level, your experience, you know, at the Division I level, you know, what does it take to get to the tournament for a D1 school and to be successful and not just get these small travel games? What do you think it takes? Absolutely. It takes, number one, it takes wins. You've got to get the wins no matter what conference you're in to, uh, to have any kind of opportunity. We see this year in the, out of the ACC, you know, Duke, Carolina, and NC State, neither, none of those teams made the tournament on the women's side. So as tough as their conference is, they were the teams that got left out in that conference because of lack of wins. Um, but it does take wins, it takes strength of schedule, obviously is what they look at. It takes uh, how tough your conference play is, and then you've got your automatic bids of your, your conference tournament champions, and you hope that there aren't too many upsets if you're a bubble team, um, because you're not gonna get in, you're, you're gonna lose your spot. All right, so uh, without further ado or commercial inter inter interruption or touch screen malfunctions, uh, we're going to go right to our uh, arts and crafts board here that the, the interns whipped up here for us at the Saratogian. <laughs> and we're going to go through uh, the Sweet 16 we've already got up here. So uh, we're just going to talk about uh, who's already in uh, Coach Bennett's Sweet 16 uh, and go from there. Uh, at the top, UConn, Michigan State, UCLA, and Texas out of the the Bridgeport region, um, any upsets or this kind of looks like what you fully expect here with these four? It, it definitely looks like the higher seeded teams advance in UConn on a tremendous you know, win streak. They're playing in Bridgeport, which is basically a home game for them. And they've got uh, the best player in women's basketball right now, Brianna Stewart. So they're going to be a tough out um, mm -hmm. in that bracket. And again, continue with the number ones and in, in the Dallas region, Baylor, Florida State, Louisville, and uh, Oregon State, pretty much uh, the standards. Not chalk like we would say in the, in the men's bracket, but just I, I think the programs you know, that we'd expect. Any surprises out of Dallas? Uh, no surprises coming out of Dallas, but seeing Florida State and Oregon State there, um, Oregon State in particular, you know, they've come a long ways over the last few years to make it out of that Pac-10 conference, so that's good for them to see something like that. And Florida State battle in the ECC and had a really good season, but uh, Baylor has been a mainstay um, as of recent, the last 10 years in the NCAA tournament. So they're playing in Dallas, their home state. All right, and in the Sioux Falls region, and again, <laughs> of local interest, this was uh, one of the surprises we talked about uh, before taping. Uh, at the top, South Carolina, no surprise there. Syracuse, we, we've got to talk about it. Uh, I see Syracuse here. But going out to the 32 and 64, how'd Syracuse get their coach? Syracuse had to beat, uh, they had to beat Albany. You know, our, our local hometown uh, team that we really like and, and know. I'm great friends with the head coach there. Um, really great friends with her. And she's done a tremendous job. Five, you know, league conference championships in the American East is nearly unheard of. First time in that conference. Um, and Albany is, you know, truly blessed to have her as a head coach. But they're playing the, the new orange on the scene. Syracuse, and I've got ties having had some a uh, couple of coaching years at Syracuse as well. So it's just it's a matter of conference. It's a matter of I think their size is probably going to be able to outdo Albany to make it to this spot. But uh, 
it's going to be a good game nonetheless. But the good news is for Coach Abe, you did take Albany over Florida to get to that game, to get to get to the 32, and then unfortunately Syracuse. That's right. Uh, a, a little bit tougher there for uh, for you Albany. So the, the big NCAA win out of the 64 to 32, and then Syracuse takes care of business. Mm -hmm. Ohio State, Arizona State, still in Sioux Falls. Uh, fully what you expected there? Absolutely. Absolutely there. And then uh, down to Lexington, Notre Dame, Miami, and then Kentucky and Maryland. Any surprises there? Well, it's surprising that Notre Dame has to travel all the way down to Lexington um, for their game, being a number one seed, probably the number you know two or three number one seed having to go down to Lexington and play in Kentucky. You know, Kentucky doesn't even have to leave their beds to play in this game, but it's a, it's a region chock full of talent. It's probably one of the stronger overall regions um, with those four teams left in it. Um, so it's going to be a lot of great basketball, a lot of coaches that have been to the tournament in some way, shape, or form. All right, we're going to continue with the knockout rounds now. Uh, we've, we've got the, uh, the marker out, and uh, again, fouling uh, President Obama and Joe Burke, Darren Bennett here going with, uh, taking us all the way through to a national champion in the women's bracket here on the Saratogian On the Record Sports Podcast Network. So, uh, UConn, Michigan State, obviously on the men's side, this is a huge game. Um, does it have that same impact, do you think, of the women's game, UConn, Michigan State? Uh, I'm not sure it has that same impact. Only be, Although Michigan State, Sparty has some great tradition. Um, I've got some great ties there. They've been there before. They were at, in the championship game back in 2005, I believe it was, um, when they lost to Baylor, actually, in that championship game. But UConn is just, they budsawed their way through. Uh, that's probably going to be a double digit, probably 20, 22 point game in the end. All right, so we got UConn advancing. And then next we go down UCLA, Texas. This is, uh, again, in the women's game, this is, this is one of those games to watch. This is going to be a great game to watch. UCLA had the number one recruiting class two years ago, all those players are sophomores. Um, Hook 'em Horn, Texas is back on the map uh, after a couple of years out of the national scene, so to speak. But uh, I do like UCLA and their youth and athleticism in this game. All right, so UCLA advances over Texas and down the Dallas region. Baylor, Florida State, obviously a home game for, for Baylor. I, I, I'm going to guess this one might be a little bit easier. Yeah, I, think it's, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be an easier game. Florida State is certainly tested in the ACC, but Baylor's going to have the guns coming out, and uh, they're, going to, they're going to advance in that round. All right, so we've got Baylor advancing. And continuing on, Louisville, Oregon State. Yeah, I like Louisville in this. Um, on their side, Oregon State is a little bit new to the dance. Louisville has that game experience in the championship play, and that's going to come up big in their victory versus Oregon State. All right, uh, this one could be very interesting for those of us in the Capital Region. South Carolina, Syracuse, but a number one. How the Q's do do uh, against uh, South Carolina? I think South Carolina is going to advance, but I'll tell you what, if there's going to be an upset on this board, if I pick an upset on this board, it could be this Syracuse-South Carolina game. And because of Syracuse's length and athleticism, they're going to play that zone. South Carolina does not have great perimeter shooting. They have a tremendous post player um, in their conference player of the year who, if she gets the ball inside the key or inside the paint, she's going to be very tough to stop. So I pick South Carolina to advance but Syracuse might upset South Carolina because of South Carolina's inability to shoot the three consistently. So we're going to take a tentative South Carolina advance link. Absolutely. All right. And then uh, Ohio State, Arizona State, and Sioux Falls region. Uh, both great athletic teams, both tremendous defensive teams, well-coached um, teams by Coach Storm and uh, Kevin McGuff, but I pick Ohio State to advance in this one. And uh, Notre Dame, Miami, and Lexington region. What do you think? I think I think you already said. Who you're yeah, <laughs> I like I like Notre Dame in this again. That's one of those surprises that they've got to travel so far, not too far, but far enough away to uh, to play being such a high seat. But I like Notre Dame advancing in that one. And then Lexington, obviously a, a home game for the Wildcats. Kentucky, Maryland, a great game, but uh, it's going to be a great game. But I think Maryland's going to advance. I think they're going to be tougher. Um, in the end in Kentucky, and Kentucky's the hometown favorite, but I do like Maryland advancing in this one. Gotcha. All right, we're going to create that final four. Uh, Bridgeport, UConn, UCLA, 
Who's going to four? Again, another advance, another home game for UConn, another uh, double-digit win in the 20s. And then Baylor versus Louisville. I see Baylor making their way back to the Final Four. South Carolina, Ohio, uh, I know you talked about uh, probably three of the number ones advancing. Is this where a number one doesn't advance? Uh, this could actually be where a number one does not advance. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm going to take the upset in Ohio State here. Okay. I'm going to take the upset in Ohio State over South Carolina because of their inability to score consistently from the perimeter. All right. And then uh, Lexington again, Notre Dame, Maryland. Notre Dame is the is the Notre Dame's going to advance. <laughs> Notre Dame's going to advance. They're one of the best. Uh, they're all extremely well coached teams by tremendous coaches and great players. But Notre Dame has that pedigree. Um, and it's almost like they're able to punch their ticket the last couple of years to the Final Four. All right. Uh, we're, I'm going to start over here. We're going to switch it up a little bit. Ohio State, Notre Dame uh, in the Final Four. Who's going to advance to uh, the championship matchup here? Notre Dame's going to advance to the championship, but I'll tell you why. Simply because the assistant never beats the head coach. The head coach at Ohio State's a former assistant at Notre Dame, Kevin McGuff at Ohio State. Uh, so I see Notre Dame beating Ohio State and moving on to the championship game. All right. And then, uh, I mean, this could be this this could be a final any year. It could be a final. U year. UConn, Baylor, uh, obviously UConn, like you said, just on that tremendous streak. Gino Oriema uh, and the entire program, the Baylor Bears. I mean, this is you know, this I think may get as many views as as, as this final might. But uh, what do you think? Is there any chinks in the armor? Is, is there a chance that UConn doesn't advance to another final? There's no chance that they don't advance to another final. UConn will be in the championship game in Indianapolis. All right. In Indianapolis, Notre Dame, UConn, they've seen each other so many times. Uh, both coaches know each other. Uh, I don't, I, I'm assuming it's a little bit friendlier. Yeah, uh, competition yeah. between those two as far as personalities go. Um, still something to watch, but uh, who do you have as your national championship? And for those of you that do need a tiebreaker uh, for your women's bracket, we need a score. Uh, I like UConn advancing. Gino's going to run out of fingers this year with his 11th national championship, so maybe he's going to start buying necklaces for for championship memorabilia. But I do like UConn, um, and I like UConn probably 72 to, let's say, uh, 72 to 58. 58, another double digit for the Huskies, number 11. So double digit championships, double digit uh, win in the championship game. And uh, any, you know, What's it mean? What's it mean? You know, for 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 University of Albany getting a 12 seed, something that uh, you know was important for them. You know, to see a Florida and then have an opportunity to see Syracuse. Is a is the U Albany program approaching that point now where it's not a question of getting in the tournament, but they're starting to see some of that respect that 12 seed. How important is that 12 seed to uh, to to a mid major to a U Albany? Absolutely, it's huge. Number one, it it, it increases your opportunity to win you know, because of the seeding situation that you're in. And it also shows the respect of the program. Last year versus Duke, I mean, they had that game to the wire until the young lady from Duke hit a corner three to uh, end up beating them by, I don't know, one or two points. But they're a team that's done it every year. They're a team that's gotten 20 plus wins the last couple of years. And when you win your conference tournament, you know, the first or the second year, that's one thing. But when you start going three, four, and then win it for the fifth year, in a really strong uh, conference this year in the American East. And the, the people, the committee pay you some respect and they give you a little bit more of an opportunity, so to speak, one, one that's earned, but more of an opportunity to advance. So uh, you may have to fill out multiple brackets on the women's side, according to uh, Coach Darren Bennett here at Skidmore, that uh, this Syracuse should be in pencil, maybe maybe not uh, maybe not in market, because if there's a chance, if there's an upset, there's a chance uh, possibly for the Danes to take out Syracuse. And then can you imagine that, you know, taking on another parental penthouse, the, you know, the, uh, the Great Danes taking on South Carolina in a regional uh, would be tremendous for the program. Absolutely. So, uh, 
So that's it, Stan Hooty with the uh, Saratogian On the Record Sports Podcast Network here on uh, the Skidmore campus with women's head basketball coach Darren Bennett breaking down uh, the women's bracket. So uh, we're bringing it to you all on the podcast. So, uh, Coach, thanks again, and uh, we'll do it again next year. Absolutely, Stan.